If science shows that certain chemicals are toxic, why can they continue to be used? One researcher here at USU says that it may be because scientific facts don't always speak for themselves, because science, by nature, just presents us with information. Science sticking to the facts means that it doesn't tell us what to do with those facts. The separation of kind of facts and values gives us information, but it leaves what to do with that information up for kind of debate. So we have this information that toxins might be carcinogenic. What does that mean? Do we ban those immediately? Do we call for more research? Is it time to wait because the economic damage would be too significant at this point? And that's where we see a lot of debates in the public and political spheres over what to do with this scientific information. Molly studies rhetoric, and specifically she's focused on how and why certain environmental and social activists were effective and persuasive. And in particular, I've done a fair amount of research on Sandra Steingraber, who is a scientist, but also a writer for the public who talks about environmental links to human health, especially to cancer. But her understanding of environmental chemicals and contaminants is not just informed by her scientific expertise, but also very much informed by her experiences as a cancer patient and survivor. Molly says it was how Steingraber blends these two ways of knowing that, in part, made her impactful as a writer. And so we wouldn't want to make the mistake of kind of creating this hierarchy between different ways of knowing and separating different ways of knowing, but rather I think it's beneficial to see how different ways of knowing can work together in really powerful ways. And taking that a step further, Molly says that in the future, policymaking decisions could benefit from hearing and considering the experiences of those affected by toxins in the environment when deciding what to do next with scientific research. Bringing in experiences of people who have suffered the most harm from these things like environmental carcinogens can really guide our interpretation and our actions based on that research.